Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Summer Maxwell and I'm a public affairs intern here at ACMI. Today I'm joined by Arlington Police Chief Julianne Flaherty to discuss community policing in Arlington. Chief Flaherty, truly thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you very much, Summer, for inviting me on. I appreciate it. So just before we get into the meat of this interview, I think to get our audience who may not know and all of us on the same page, would you be able to just define community policing in your own words? Uh, sure. So community policing is really about the community. It's about building partnerships with um, between police officers and community members, um, working with residents to solve problems, um, working with residents, business owners, um, and just coming together to make the community safer and to make the community a better place to um, live, work, and visit. It's really um, more than just a meet and greet. It's about building these long-term relationships. Um, a lot of um, some of the more serious crimes that we've solved in the past had involved people who we built these relationships with prior to. So it's really important. It's something that um, the Arlington Police Department has been involved in in a long time, and we're really proud of our community policing efforts. So speaking more to talking about those relationships, could you explain the goal specifically of implementing community policing in Arlington? Is it building those or even more than that? Yeah, so the goals are really just building trust and legitimacy, right? We want our residents and our business owners to know that uh, members of the police department are caring, compassionate, very well-trained professional police officers who want to work with people um, in the community to um, to solve these problems and, and to um, solve crimes and just to make the community stronger. Just to give us an idea, would you be able to spotlight one, maybe your favorite if you had to pick one, community policing based program that you run out of Arlington PD? Yeah, picking one is, is difficult, but um, we've developed many programs over the years. And I, I really like to think of it as policing has really changed and evolved over the years. And Arlington Police Department has really changed um, the way we police our community as well. Um, we have many programs. We have our Arlington Opiate Outreach Program. We have our Homeless Outreach Program. Um, we were one of the first departments um, in the Commonwealth to bring in a jail diversion clinician, which means that we have a clinician embedded within our police department who corresponds to people um, that are in behavioral health crises. Um, I think that's one of our most important community policing programs. Um, we have a recovery coach that works within the police department who helps people on their recovery journey and assist people with resources. Um, I think we, uh, I'll talk about um, each program a little more in depth, but we have our um, canine team with Officer Hogan and Iko. I think you would be very hard pressed to find anybody in the community in the school department who hasn't met Officer Hogan and canine Iko. He's one of our officers who goes to the schools um, he gives demonstrations with his canine partner um, and just about, I would say, in the summer every day, um, I have a group of either scouts or um, brownies, um, camps coming up to my office because he's doing a tour and a demonstration. So he's really one of our offices um, who connects with the kids in the community along with our school resource officer. Um, and then we also have our Citizens Police Academy that we run every year. We haven't been able to do it the past couple of years because of COVID, um, but we bring people in the community in and we give them a mini police academy where they can learn everything that is happening in the police department, um, all of our different departments, um, learn about our policies and our procedures. Um, and, and that's been a great program. I have people calling me all the time asking me when the next program will be running because um, that's really important for people to know what we do here and to learn about the police department, learn about our programs and build those relationships. So I see people, past graduates all the time at a coffee shop or in the center walking by who um, will recognize me and, and have a comment about something that they did or learned in the police academy. So again, all of these programs are about um, building relationships and partnering with the community. It seems like you guys have a lot going on there and it's exciting to hear about them coming back after COVID and in their full strength. A lot of these programs are also clearly very tailored to Arlington, which to me begs the question, especially because your police department has been nationally recognized for its success in community policing and being a semi-unique model. 
but that also begs the question, do you, do you think that community policing has the potential to succeed everywhere or is part of its success that it's in a community like Arlington, um, suburban, rather, rather affluent, or, or do you think that it can succeed anywhere? Yeah, so I think it can. Um, I don't think there's a one size fits all model for community policing. I think you need to tailor your, tailor your programs um, based on the needs of the community. So um, we don't have the same needs as like a Boston or Cambridge. So we looked at what our community asked for, um, what kind of calls we respond to and really the makeup of our community and we provide services um, based on the needs of our community. And it really, um, you know, it's not, Boston has different programs, Somerville has different programs, um, but really here in Arlington, it's more of a philosophy. It's what all of our police officers um, think about and keep in mind when, when they're working with community members. Speaking of, you know, it around different communities in Arlington, are there in, in Arlington or at a bigger level, is there any data to support, you know, the use of community policing or implementing its success that you guys have? Yeah, as far as gearing success, um, we look at crime rates. We look, um, you know, how many house breaks we have compared to last year or, or how many, um, you know, destruct property destructions or things of that nature. Um, but when, when I think about successes of the program, I look at the relationships that we've been able to build. Um, I walk through our front lobby every day and often there'll be somebody um, an unsheltered person sitting in our front lobby waiting for an officer to come and pick them up and take them to court to clear up a warrant um, because our officers have built these relationships with people in the community. I um, stop in Dunkin Donuts across the street from the police station just about every day to pick up my tea in the morning and I often will see um, one of our officers having breakfast with somebody and um, that person, people will come to the police station because they're hungry, right? And it's really um, a good feeling for me to know that when somebody needs services or if they need something or if they're in crisis, that the first person they think that can help them is one of our Arlington police officers. So really that's, that's how I gear the success of our community policing. Yeah, it appears that you are building a lot of relationships there and you've had that success. But at the same time, I imagine that there are challenges to running community policing programs, maybe outside of the typical challenges of just running a police department. Are there any challenges in community policing specifically that you'd like to speak to? Yeah, I guess. Um, so getting mentioning COVID again, that was a challenging time for community policing. We weren't able to be out in the community. We weren't able to... Um, do our park and walks and go into businesses um, and engage with people the way we usually like to engage with people. So we did a lot of social media, right? So we um, put, pushed a lot of information out um, about our services and how we were still here during COVID and we wanted people to know that, but we were doing a lot of things virtually. So we used our, uh, our Twitter, our Facebook um, and our website to really get information out there. Um, and I think another challenge is not everybody feels comfortable with the police, right? So we have to take, keep that in mind. We may want to engage and partner, but there are some people who still have um, issues of trust and we take that into consideration. So that's really, you know, an important aspect too of um, successful programs. Well, hopefully with the, the COVID challenge, especially we're now able to be finally starting to move past that or uh, have adapted appropriately so that these programs can now continue in 2022 and beyond. Um, something that I think about a lot as a young person and a university student is how my personal relationship with police as a university student is different from many communities. My university and many in the Boston area and nationally have their own private police force opposed to interacting with those as much from the towns or communities that host the university. Do you think that community policing can come to play a role on universities or campuses? Because I know campus police relations are not always the most positive for many students. Right, yeah, so I think so. I think, um, you know, a campus is like a community, right? As, as especially a lot of the bigger campuses, they do have their own police forces. And I am familiar with many, um, especially in the Boston area that have programs, like I mentioned, they have um, RAD programs for rape aggression training um, for students. They have citizens police academies. They have programs um, in which 
students can call on the police for safety walks home and um, they'll have um, just meetings. I see a, um, a lot on social media where they'll have ice cream socials and that's all about coming together, getting to know your local police department or your campus police department, building those relationships. So when students need help, if they um, you know, um, are afraid or if they, they need something from the police department, they can call and you know, hopefully they'll be on a first name basis with some of the officers. That's what I always hope for um, here in Arlington. Another bigger question that I have is in the past two years, especially, I've seen a lot more calls to defund or disarm or even in some cases abolish police departments. Do you think that community policing can serve in any way to satisfy or meet compromises or at least bring more discussion to the table with groups that are calling for this? Yeah, sure. So when people talk about defunding the police departments, um, they're talking about taking funds or money away from police budgets and investing them in other um, social services or behavioral health services. And um, just as we spoke about earlier, the Allington Police Department already has a lot of these behavioral health programs set up for community members. Um, I talked about our jail diversion program where we have a clinician embedded within the police department. We have a recovery coach. Um, we, have, um, we partner often with health and human services um, to work with people in the community who are in need of services, right? We partner with the Somerville Homeless Coalition to um, identify people in the community who are unsheltered and to get them permanent housing or the services they need to um, eventually end up in permanent housing. So we do a lot of work with those programs as is, but yes, there's always, you know, I'm always open to having more conversations with people in the community about um, different programs that we can offer or what the town offers. Just before we wrap out, is there anything else that you'd like to add to our audience about community policing or just updates to look out for with the APD in general? So I, um, I thought about it and um, just over this past weekend, I've been thinking a lot that I had the um, great experience of attending our academy graduation. We just had six new police officers graduate from the Cambridge Northeastern Police Academy. Um, it was a great um, graduation ceremony. And one of the officers that came with us to attend was Officer um, Kelly, who's been with the Allington Police Off um, Department for um, several years. And he had, um, he works in patrol and during the course of his shifts, he would often stop into a lot of the businesses in his sector. We have Arlington is broken up into six different sectors. That's where we do our community policing. And he um, became friends with one of the clerks that, that worked in one of the stores. And the clerk was very interested in being an Arlington police officer and they talked a lot. And Officer Kelly had guided him through the process of taking the civil service test, um, of um, signing up for it, taking the test through the interview process. Um, and this particular um, person ended up going to the academy. Um, he's from Nepal, so he didn't have a lot of family here. And at the graduation, Officer Kelly was asked by the officer to pin his badge on him. So if I, you know, that is the best example of community policing that I could give. And I was so proud to be part of that moment where um, you know, one of our offices just patrolling um, his sector was able to make this relationship and partnership with somebody in the community and um, assist him through his journey of being an Arlington police officer. So that's the best example that I can give. Well, Chief, as always, your time is so greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for joining us here today, and we look forward to talking with you in the near future. And from ACMI, I'm Summer Maxwell. This has been a conversation with Chief of Arlington Police, Julianne Flaherty. We appreciate you for being here.